good evening i hope you all are doing okay so i have been receiving some of the requests regarding a uh, basic setup of wind litter so today i have decided to go ahead and i'll just show you the basic steps which are needed in order to play your favorite games on android using the wind letter application so uh, before we go ahead i just want to give a brief uh, info about the windows emulation on android so there are several other options including exagear mobox etc however my personal preference is winletter since this particular application now comes with the, like a single package so you don't have to install the obb file manually or you have to do any termux interference or command and stuff so that is something like it's like a hassle free experience you don't have to do everything from the console or run the commands to download the files etc so it's like a basic uh, android app and apart from that what i like the most is the x input feature so i have tried uh, the other windows emulation which are available however what i found is that the other windows emulators they all require i mean they do not require actually they all do not support the x input or the physical controls very easily but whenever you are using the win letter emulation uh, then you will be able to use the uh, external uh, xbox controller or bluetooth controllers with ease it natively supports it so that is the reason why i chose to go ahead with win letter so now without further ado let me go ahead and show you the setup so beforehand you need to have couple of things which are less down so first of all you need to have the win later apk file i have already uh, downloaded that file so i have it in my uh odin 2 so as you can see let me just uh, sort them as okay so as you can see these are the apk file okay so i have the official uh, winlitter apk by bruno here and this is the modded version and one of my favorite ones frost 6.1 version 2 which i'm using right now and i also have the latest fa release so it's up to you if you want minimalistic uh, modification and just uh, something to go around with you can definitely go with the official one and if you need or require additional steps for more further tweaking and optimizing then you can go ahead with the modified versions i'll be definitely giving all the links you need okay apart from this uh, emulator uh, i would suggest you to keep few things handy i could be wrong here but still it's my personal preference so what i do is i have uh, quite a few softwares which i like to have so first of all there is uh, physics the nvidia physics uh, so i have couple of versions which are needed for few old games i like to keep them handy and i install them whenever i get the pop up that the physics uh, application the software cannot be found apart from that i also keep the visual c++ or the runtime so i have the aio versions which just install all of the visual c++ redistributable on the win litter application so these are basic things and if you're using the modified winletter apks this will this might come uh, pre-installed or you'll have a shortcuts to install them from the emulator itself okay so now moving forward i'll just go ahead and reinstall the apks just to show you how to do it so as you can see i already have this installed hence i'm getting the update pop-up so i'll just go ahead and click on open now as you can see i have already created a container a container is must whenever you're trying to run your games because container is like the vm or the os within which you'll be running the games and stuff okay so just for demonstration purpose i'm going to remove my previous container and i'm going to do a fresh install okay so once you click on this plus icon it will bring up this particular settings menu 
So since I'm using a Snapdragon device, uh, this is the basic uh, resolution which everyone uses. You can uh, scale it down for your convenience. And since I'm using a Snapdragon device, I prefer to use Turnip driver. If you're using uh, some uh, device with Mali GPU, then you can go ahead with Virgil, which is the universal one. Now, once you click on Turnip Adreno, it will give you the option to select the driver version. This is the latest one, which is 24.1. So I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm going to click OK. Now, next to DX wrapper, I hope it's visible. Okay, now moving on to DX wrapper, I'm going to select DXVK. Okay, and I'm going to set the driver as 1.10.3. The latest one is 2.3.1, but it's still having some compatibility issues, though it offers much better performance. So for now, just for testing purpose, I'm going to keep it at default value, which is 1.10.3. Once I click on OK, can proceed further I always prefer keeping a tick on the show IPS button <laughs> and also you can take or untick the CPU zero it doesn't matter much in my opinion okay uh, now moving forward you may go ahead and change this to other GPU or leave it as it is uh, in my experience I haven't faced any such issues changing it or keeping it as it is so that's why I'm not going to make any changes. So this is the default value. The GPU should be 9800GT and the video memory size should be 2GB. Okay. Moving forward, we have the win component. I'm going to keep this one as well as it is. No changes made here. Next, the environment variable. Now this is an interesting part. Though I don't tweak with this much, I just like to add one command and at times in the custom variants, this is already added, which is the DXVK HUD. So what this does is, uh, in while gaming on PC, many of us, we just use an HUD op, uh, just to monitor how the GPU usage or the temperature is with the all stats. So here also we are doing the same. Now... This is the command which we need to add after we add the variable. So the version would show you the turnip or the uh, driver version, the API, okay, and then the FPS and the frame time, which would be in AMS and the GPU load, how much GPU is getting used, uh, the memory usage and the developer info. So you can remove it. Some people just prefer uh, keeping only the FPS and the version. So it's up to you. You can remove any point, any part of it and keep it as it is. So once I click on done, this is how it should look. So this comes pre-installed in the Frost version. Thanks to the developer who is doing a tremendous hard work to modify that version. Okay. So this is pretty much it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this tick. Okay. I think I skipped the last two parts though. I haven't made any changes. I'll just show it to you. So the last two parts are the drive letter E and D where do you want to map them? And next is the advanced one. So here you can change the presets for few games. I've seen that if you change the presets to uh, intermediate or performance, you will uh, see there is a noticeable performance improvement however at times the games might crash so for now i just want to keep it as it is now clicking on this blue tick and now you can see the container is created okay and i like uh, keeping this as three uh, uh, the box 86 should be version 3.0 and the 64 should be 2.6 as the default one now moving forward in order to run the container we need to click on run after clicking on those three dots and this should bring up your vm or your uh, desktop interface okay once you click on that this particular d drive should be your downloads folder and i suggest you to create one folder here where you'd be keeping your game files or the fold so as you can see right now i have the dark sector setup file 
and since there's a big game uh, shadow of motor which i was testing today so i have kept this setup file here i mean uh, the installation files here and i can run them directly from here okay so this is the thing about game installation location now i will show you the basic requirements once you are in the, the basic things you should do after you are inside the vm so first thing first once you are inside what i prefer doing is go to system tool and click on wine mono installer because this is required for pretty much uh, most of the applications or the games to run so this is what i like to do before i go ahead with the gaming part Okay, while this is getting installed, I think I should be able to show you other things. So since this is the stock version or the basic version from Bruno, there is not, not much modifications added to it. Okay, I think the installation is complete. Now it's just getting updated, so it should be over within few seconds. Okay, this is done. Now, if you have a physical controller, in order to check whether the controller is getting recognized or not, you can click on the game controllers option from the settings, and as you can see, my physical controls are getting recognized as xbox wireless controller and inside the x input you should be able to see the inputs so as you can see i'm rotating my left uh, stick and it's just recognizing the same same goes for the right one each and every key press should be recognized in the x input however the rumble still doesn't work and i think we have a lot of way to go to get the rumble working but as of now no complaints it's working as it should so closing it here now just for uh, further demonstration or for the advanced uh, configuration option what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this and i'm going to open the fox version because that comes with a lot of preloaded stuff so it will be easier for me to uh, guide you guys further on the same so in the first i mean in till now you have seen how to install the win letter and how we are creating the basic container stuff and how we are setting things up now moving on with the custom one so i'm not going through the container creation again because you guys are already aware of it what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the container which was previously created just to uh, let you guys know through the options so as you've seen in the previous uh stock uh Windata version we do not have much options we just had a few options like system tools and control panels etc in the modified versions which are mainly done by fa or frost we have a lot of custom options for instance here you can see let me just bring this up okay here you can see uh, we have add-on options for instance we can install the lav filters physics software etc wine gecko installer wine mono installer all of these are offline this we can install if required we have the direct sound option this helps choppy sounds or no sound issue for few games and apart from that we have the dxvk option so here you can select different kind of uh, type of dxvk as per your convenience because at times you would see some games are launching with a particular dxvk uh, uh, DXVK version however it's not launching with the other and vice versa uh, in my opinion I would suggest you to go with the DXVK async uh, 1.10.3 this is universally the most compatible DXVK version which I've seen and people who are into WinLitter and other uh, PC emulation I believe they will also say the same because this is the most supported version we have and now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the renderer as the latest version so 
this is the latest one turnips version 6 so for some reason frost has removed uh, this particular version selection in the container menu for good reasons because a few people have noticed that though they are changing the uh, turnip version or the uh, DXVK version still it's not changing it properly and inside the application they are just showing the old version okay so I think I have gone through the custom application points where you can have this add-on features you also have 3d test then you have the game fixes like you can limit the FPS to 60 FPS and stuff like that okay so that is pretty much it. I don't think there is much to configure or do uh, for the basic tuning part. But there are games for which you might need to uh, modify the Box 86 or Box 64 versions. I believe that is pretty much advanced stuff. Even I'm not aware of that completely. So whenever I get some knowledge or some ideas, I'll definitely make a second video. Now just before uh, finishing this, I'll just try to run Shadow of Mordor. Let's see how well it works. Okay, I believe there could be some issues with the controls itself because I believe in the Frostus version somehow, this is a known bug, I mean many people who use the physical controls they have confirmed that uh, at times the X input just stops working so there's a workaround that you can copy the x input dll files inside the system 32 folder but that might work or might not so this is a pretty annoying situation but at least the physical buttons are working that is the main thing so i'm guessing uh, for this case as well i think uh, my physical controls might not work because i can see that they are not recognizing it not sure why so I might have to recreate this container or apply some fix so no need to worry what I'll do is I'll just quickly switch to the original container and give you a showcase so as you can see the controls are not getting recognized and I'll just go ahead and click on quit okay and if I go ahead and click on game controllers I believe yeah okay it's showing up here that is cool but somehow it's not working not sure why okay not to worry I do have a fix let me apply it and see if that works so guys I believe the game demonstration part you'll have to excuse me for that because this video is getting already too long I'll just go ahead and show you if the fix works for the Xbox controller thing okay okay i believe this was made by my good friend ajay who was one of the pioneers who implemented win later modification and stuff let's see after installing the batch file whether this fixes the issue or not okay no i don't think it's working let us just close it and reopen it see if that fixes the issue i'm going to close everything down and then we're going to relaunch the container okay let's see okay bingo so that particular fix definitely worked and now we have our controls back online this is some sort of glitch and i believe bruno is already working on it however uh, let him walk in his own pace i don't want to speed things up because all of these people they are taking out their important time to do some passion project and we are not definitely paying them or anything they're just doing it uh, out of their passion so we just need to eagerly wait and share the feedback whether the fixes are working or not so let's go ahead and continue with the game there is a small pause whenever i launch shadow of mordor I'm not sure if it has something to do with the internet itself or maybe some sort of cache building on stuff. Okay. So this is just a sneak peek session guys. 
okay i think it's working this time as you can see when i'm pressing a button it's just skipping and i'm not going to do a detailed gaming i'm going to do a separate video this is just a demonstration on how it works with the game so i'm just waiting for it, the loading to complete because i know it's going to be a long video and many of us don't have that much time or patience to go along with it so i understand that this look gorgeous i mean i played this on pc long back and it's really amazing how far the arm architecture has come this far i mean you can literally see okay. So as you can see, the CPU usage is around 80% and the game is also working fine. Regarding these minor glitches, I'll show you how to fix them quickly. This is another bonus thing I'm doing right now. So you need to go to advanced settings. You need to go to this option, set everything to high. Yes, high. Trust me, if you're using an 8 Gen 2 device, this can handle it and uh, set this to 150 percent see if that fixes the issue or not oh it did so right now we are running this on 1080p highest settings and you can see the fps is around 20 or 22 it's like that okay let us now reduce it to 1080p to 720p let's see if that in the last video where the shadows okay 100 percent okay let's see if that improves the fps count or not the dark lord sauron was defeated by the last moments of men and elves it is here that for two and a half hours the judges of the Okay, so again the FPS is dipping. It's like 20 FPS. You'll have to hit harder if you want to your father. Hard enough? So guys, this is pretty much it. I know you'll have a lot of questions. Do ask me those questions. I'll try my best to answer those. And thanks for watching this long video. I hope it will be worth it for you to configure and run the games and happy gaming thank you